Good morning. I'm Leonard Hamlin, Canon Missioner of the Washington National Cathedral. And I'm grateful to welcome you to this moment of prayer and devotion on behalf of our Dean, as well as all of my colleagues here at the Cathedral on this Thursday, July 18th. I invite you on this morning to join me in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come so ever grateful for your love towards us, your presence with us. We ask on this day that once again, that you might hold us, you might pour out your spirit upon us, you might unite us. We pray that you would fill us for all the places that you are preparing to send us. We ask this in your wonderful name, amen. This morning, our gospel comes to us out of the Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 28th through the 30th verses. And in Matthew's gospel, we hear these words. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. These are familiar verses, perhaps to many, and uh, prayerfully there are those who may be hearing this, uh, perhaps in a refreshing way, or perhaps maybe even a new way, because you decided to connect this morning. Here, as Jesus speaks to those who are listening, there was a crowd of those who were gathered around, and Jesus is speaking to those sometimes who are carrying that heavy weight of just trying to get it right, listening to the standards that others have set. And in this text, Jesus extends an appointed invitation to all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. Not just the burdens of life, but the burdens of trying to live and meet all of sometimes the religious standards that we put on each other, the ceremonial pieces that perhaps get weigh us down and keep us from becoming all that God has created us to be. The disciples are familiar with Jesus' invitations by this point. As all of this began, with a simple two-word invitation that simply started when Jesus said, follow me. There was nothing else added. There was nothing else weighty to it. It just said, follow me. They spent the next years just simply learning how to love God and how to love their neighbor. They were following and learning and getting new understanding and strengths, recognizing their gifts. All of these standards that sometimes get in the way, Jesus was simply trying to remove or to make lighter and said, listen, simply follow me. Learn of me. What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? What does it mean to be a disciple of Christ? What does it mean when we call ourselves Christian? Jesus says, learn of me. Today the question is still being asked, what does it mean to be a Christian? Today the question is still being asked for social, political, and even, even theological motivations. Standards, degrees, who's in, who's out, who's right, who's wrong. And somehow we still lose what it means to simply follow him, to love God and love our neighbor. I'm certain that there were many who wanted in the crowd who just simply wanted to draw closer to God through their faith and experience the kingdom here on earth. But they were struggling as a result of numerous influences, numerous standards, numerous procedures, numerous policies, when the emphasis was simply on, are we following the will of God? And are we in that loving the neighbor who is next to us? 
Jesus tells those who are listening in this text to take up his yoke and learn of him. I will simply say all that Jesus said was, try me. Try me. Try me to learn of me. There is a space between trying and learning that many of us don't leave room for. This space is consequential to our faith and also to our maturity. In this day and age where immediate gratification, answers, responses, and results are both expected and often demanded, I want to remind us all that there will still be moments when faith is needed. There are still going to be moments when faith is the only way to unlock the door to experiencing new realities and transform circumstances. We have a number, an abundant number of voices in this age seeking to calm troubled spirits found within individuals, communities, families, even within our nation and beyond. And Jesus informs those who are listening to try me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. On this day, I close by really reminding you of a simple parable and story that I read years ago about the standards that we put on each other. It was simply titled, The Sun and the Umbrella. In this, there were a people many years ago who had written, who called themselves the sun worshipers. The sun worshipers, the S-U-N worshipers. Once they had been part of a much larger company living in a badly lighted old barn known as the House of Legality. They gathered in this dimly lighted old barn. They lived there day in and day out. And then a young prophet came to them one day and told some of them here that there was bright sunshine outside. Here, they were used to the very dim light and living their life. And the prophet came and told them about the bright light that was outside. And here it angered some of them. And so they put that prophet to death. There were some, however, who believed him. However, and after that, they went out of the barn, experienced the bright sunshine. They lived in the sun. But for some reason, they were unable to endure the direct sunlight. So they put up an umbrella. And as they put up the umbrella upon which here that they, to cover themselves, they wrote on the umbrella, we are the sun worshipers. Then certain wise men within the group collected writings and started to hear, think a little bit differently. So they put up an umbrella underneath the larger umbrella. And here disputes arose about the interpretation of what was written and the conclusions that were made, whereupon other men separated from that and they put up another umbrella under the larger umbrella and they said, we're the sun worshipers. Then another group came along and they put up another umbrella underneath and they started writing and they started doing this. And then here they wrote on theirs, we're the true sun worshipers. One by one, Many smaller umbrellas sprang up and they started to create their own different ways of doing everything, sheltering groups, taking on others, and each one calling themselves the true sun worshipers. But the real problem was none of them decided to come out and live in the full light of the sun. I share that with us this morning simply to say that perhaps what all of us need to recognize is that we all need to come out from under our umbrellas and live in the light of not just the S-U-N, 
but the light of the SOA. Amen. I invite you on this morning to join me in that word of prayer that Jesus shared with his disciples, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus reminds us, for his yoke is easy and my burden is light. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord smile on you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord show you his favor. And may the Lord bless you with his peace. Amen.